So hi everyone. Today we will try to understand what are generalized additive models for regression alongside the mathematics and the equations that it follows. So first of all, let's understand uh, why do we need generalized additive models and what is the requirement? Why can't we go with just linear regression? So if you remember, uh, whenever we perform linear regression, uh, basically there are a few assumptions that are followed, uh, like uh, the heterodicity, the values should be, um, there should not be any multicollinearity. Uh, apart from that, the variable should be independent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, eventually, uh, if you understand in the real world dynamics, uh, following all those uh, assumptions is a bit difficult. So these are pretty hypothetical conditions in which linear regression works perfectly. Uh, so what should we do in conditions where we are not able to uh, fulfill those assumptions in the real world data? The answer is GAMS, that is generalized additive models. And uh, to be very, very honest, uh, what I uh, like uh, when you will read about it, you will understand how GAMS can be used to model any type of regression mod uh, regression problem, whether it can be a nonlinear relationship between the variables or we're trying to curve the values between some particular range. So uh, anywhere we are trying to play around with the linearity. So if you remember in the linear equation, we have an equation y equals to mx plus c. But at times it can be the case that the relationship is not linear. It can be the case that key, uh, when you're trying to uh, model a linear equation, some of the variables do have a linear uh, relationship, but some of the variables don't have a linear relationship with the target. So it's more of a real world scenario uh, where we are not uh, where we are not in a hypothetical situation. We don't uh, follow those uh, linear re regression assumptions, and eventually we have we wish to have a model that can be a bit flexible. In this case, uh, GAMS come in. So let's first of all uh, see what is a general equation for linear regression. As you can see, it's y equals to ax1 plus bx2 plus cx3, etc. Now in case of GAMS, uh, the equation becomes slightly, uh, uh, very much di uh, different. That is, g of y, uh, g of y equals to uh, w1 f1 x1 uh, plus w2 f2 x2 plus w3 f3 x3. So let's understand the equation of GAMS. So you can like I've written these two equations so that uh, you can have a comparison how the two systems are different so there are uh, majorly two things that you can see new uh, that is one is that g of y that we are using instead of y and f1 f2 f3 uh, instead of uh, x1 x2 x3 directly so let's understand uh, so we will be talking about the g of y function that we are using uh, uh, in the last of this entire session let's first of all understand what is this f of n so f of n is a uh, set of functions, not a single function, but it is a set of functions that models each feature in the data set separately to the target variable. So for example, if we have five features in the data set uh, and we are uh, trying to uh, forecast for some, say some regression uh, value, some continuous value. So what will happen is that uh, these functions that we are using f1, f2, f3, f4, f5, these functions are unique in nature, uh, like uh, maybe unique in nature, they can be uh, completely different from each other and they are separately trying to uh, fit on the target value. So it can be the case that some of the variables may have a nonlinear relationship. Some of them may have a linear relationship. So these functions will try to separately uh, like consider all these cases in the picture given the feature. So different features will have different functions uh, to get mapped to the uh, value g of y. We will talk about why we are using a g of y and not directly a y. g of y is a function basically. So uh, that's fine, but what actually are, uh, what is the mathematical representation of the function? As we told you, f of n can be anything. Now f of n can uh, have different representations given different features. It can be polynomial equation also for uh, including non-linearity or it can be a RBF function also. So RBF is a kernel. If you remember, you must have read it about in SVM, which takes, uh, which takes kernel equals to RBF as default. You can go and read about it. So the most common uh, function f of n, f of n is called as the f of n function that we are using are called as smoothing functions is regression splines. So regression spline is a family of functions that usually get used for most of the features uh, to uh, model in a GAM. So we will understand what is a regression spline and all that uh, later in the post. So first of all, we need to understand a few concepts before we jump on to regression spline and the final equation of GAMs. Basis functions are nothing but a set of simple functions that can be used to uh, represent a complex nonlinear function. So, for example, as you can see, assume that we have function 5 plus 2 into x square. Now, uh, to represent this, we can have a set of basis function as 
f of x is equal to 1 f of x equals to x uh, f of x equal to x square and using the uh, using these three functions in the equation we will try to represent f of x the first f of x that we have mentioned like 5 into f1 plus 0 into f2 plus 2 into f3 now uh, basis functions uh, we won't be deep diving into basis functions because this is not the motive of the post we will uh, cover it separately sometimes after uh, this post this post is over they can be multiple types of basis functions like rbf kernel or splines we are discussing about what are splines so splines are basically defined as piecewise polynomials so let's understand what are piecewise polynomials so basically piecewise polynomials are nothing but um, such polynomials uh, whose definitions gets changed depending upon the interval of the value for example uh, uh, look at this function m into x plus a when x is less than 5 m into x plus n into x square when uh, x is in between 5 to 10 and p into x q when x is greater than 10 so you can see that given different intervals of x this uh, particular polynomial has different versions and that is what is called as a piecewise polynomial now depending upon the degree of uh, splines we can have uh, the following uh, uh, basis functions that can be used to construct the above splines so you are trying to understand right uh, let's try to understand so if we have a degree 2 spline that means the basis functions that we can use is uh, uh, fx1 fx equals to x and fx equals to x square similarly if the degree is uh, is uh, 1 then uh, the fun basis function can be used as f of x equals to 1 f of x equal to x uh, so using this uh, depending upon the degree of the spline we will first of all set up the basis function and eventually then we will try to declare that uh, piecewise polynomial so if you remember in basis function we are talking that using the uh, simple functions we are trying to declare a complex function so this complex function that we use to declare that we wish to declare using uh, uh, basis uh, basis functions that we uh, uh, that we mentioned lower uh, like here is this piecewise polynomial. So this piecewise polynomials are getting defined are getting represented using this basis functions depending on the degree of the spline. Now regression splines regression splines are nothing but weighted sum of a set of basis functions. So if you can uh, think of so we would be uh, declaring these po piecewise polynomials using basis functions and eventually the multiple basis function that we would be using we will be weighing them as well so it will have some weights so finally if you look at uh, the final representation of f of n xn is equal to summation over wk bk x of n let's try to understand uh, this uh, con uh, this particular term that we have written so f of n is equal to the smoothing functions for the nth feature uh, so i guess you have must have understand that by now that uh, f of n has different representation for different variables second thing uh, even the family of the function that is getting used is can be completely different so we are uh, discussing regression spline as an example it can be the case that function one uh, is getting represented by uh, rbf uh, function uh, feature two can be represented by some polynomial etc uh, what is bk bk is the kth base, basis function that we are using in a regression spline so again i think this can be a bit confusing so you need to uh, uh, visit back again and again regression spline is defined is defined as a uh, uh, weighted sum of uh, basis functions and basis functions are getting used to define a piecewise polynomial uh, so just remember this so we will be using multiple basis functions to represent a single regression spline so here b k represents k basis function and summation over k is uh, represents uh, the addition of all the basis functions that we are using from 0 to total basis function that are getting used that is the degree of the spline basically so the final equation that the gams uh, become if we are using just a regression spline again this is just for example can look something like this g of i equals to summation over k w k b k summation over m summation over n so as you can see that different features uh, each of these term represents a different relation uh, like the relationship getting model for some feature uh, of uh, feature f of n with a g of y that is why we are having different degrees with different features now uh, coming back to the last question that uh, coming back to the question that we left earlier what is this g function that we are using why we are not predicting directly y in case uh, instead we are predicting g of y so i guess we need to trace back to the definition of a generalized linear model that are glms i think you must have not have heard of it uh, but uh, it is a very important concept both glms and gams so basically 
it states that when the relationship between the feature variables and target variable is not linear but still we wish to move on with regression uh, linear regression equations only so there is some tweaking that is required in the equation uh, so for example assume that y is equals to uh, depends upon is non linearly related to x but we wish to represent this uh, relationship uh, this model in terms of regression only re uh, linear regression so in that case we will tweak that linear regression equation a bit where what we would be doing is that instead of using this equation y equals to ax1 plus bx2 plus cx this is a typical linear equation we would go for g of y equals to a of x minus bx, uh, bx square plus cx3 uh, uh, etc which becomes an equation for glms now where g of y is called as a link function so what does this link function do so it tries to curve that non linear relationship between y and uh, the variables uh, the variables at x1 x2 x3 into a linear relationship you get my point so uh, earlier uh, why we are using glms and uh, gams because uh, uh, in conditions where assumptions for uh, linear regressions are, uh, aren't followed up so what we are trying when we are trying to uh, model such conditions using linear equations in that case we are using some transformation function over y so that the relationship should be depicted as a linear relation only i think uh, we won't be deep diving much into it just just to understand that the function that you're using helps us to maintain the linearity of the equation uh, now for example uh, why we are calling it generalize the term getting generalized is because it can be used to represent any regression problem uh, be it linear or linear so how can we derive a linear regression equation from a gam so if the identity function is equals to uh, is link function link function is identity function that means g of y equals to y and f of n is also an identity function so if this equation this is our gams equation becomes this equation which is a linear equation function so linear uh, any type of regression equation can be derived from gams only depending upon the f of n and the g of n function that we are using so if it is uh, if both of them are identity function it gives us a linear equation function